I've mentioned before how I think we're in a great time for hardware, but not so much for software. Uh, since it's a holiday in the US and I got a little extra time off, I'll give a couple of examples of uh, what I mean by this. So I did a few videos about writing a Plan 9 file system to control smart light bulbs. Uh, I looked into expanding this by adding some smart plugs, which would let me control other devices besides light bulbs. And I haven't been able to get my hands on any of the Wiz ones, but I did see ones offered by TP-Link uh, with their own system called CASA. Searching around on how these worked, uh, I found some papers going into all sorts of details on the protocols they used and some other interesting bits, like that they actually run Linux with BusyBox and do it on a MIPS processor, similar to the one on the uh, router boards I've been working on. And it looks to be an Atheros AR 9331, which seems to commonly be clocked at 400 megahertz and have a full access point capability and a 2.4 gigahertz radio. These also have the ability to track power usage, uh, which sounds interesting, especially with how part of my Plan 9 project is to use Plan 9's well-integrated networking to build a easily readable sensor network. The manufacturer kept costs down by skimping on the RAM, but other than that, this would have been a capable Wi-Fi router a decade ago. Uh, for a lot of uses, it still would be. While the Wiz bulbs are just microcontrollers, these TP-Link devices could potentially run Plan 9 or 9Front directly. Um, if the 16 megs of RAM number is correct, it would have to be pretty stripped down um, if you wanted to keep Wi-Fi and all that functionality. Um, but these chips are pretty capable and can do a fair amount of local processing and I.O. Uh, if it was running Plan 9 on a grid, that would give it uh, authentication access, network encryption, and a way to access programs and stored data on a local server. And while it is cool that Linux is so portable and opens a lot of doors by being open source, uh, the limitations of its presuppositions are a problem. Uh, it assumes itself to be running a 1970s time-sharing system. It assumes it needs to run its own multi-user authentication system. The GNU tools gain so much bloat that it needs a slimmed-down command shell. And since networking is an add-on, it has two custom protocols and a flimsy HTTP server. Another bit of hilarity to recently come out of the world of tech news, Amazon has lost tens of billions of dollars on the whole Alexa thing. Uh, I've heard mixed information on how that money was considered lost and if the hardware itself was either sold at cost or as a loss leader. Uh, so I looked around and I found a good teardown on the Echo Dot. Many of these devices feature a microphone array, which is a pretty neat bit of technology in its own right. Um, but not one to break the bank. Uh, the part that interested me was another example of really nice tech being so cheap that it'll just be shoved into something and be underutilized. It runs a quad-core ARM processor from MediaTek. Uh, this is a 64-bit Cortex-A53 running a little over a gigahertz, which puts it on par with the Raspberry Pi 3B. It is specifically marketed for tablets and can do 3D graphics and play 1080p video. Interestingly enough, it has both GPS and FM radio built in. Um, an interesting thing about a device with GPS, assuming that it has a decent enough antenna, is that it doesn't need a battery backup for real-time clock. It can get universal time from the GPS satellites and use its position and a table to figure out what time zone it's in. And since it has networking, it can act as a time server to your local network. And I actually did this uh, with a Raspberry Pi and uh, buying a separate uh, standalone GPS unit. And Ninefront came with everything I needed to have that Pi uh, share the time via NTP. And then I just set the other Pis on the grid to just sync time off the Pi. Uh, as usual, the Echo Dot skimps on the RAM, but given it doesn't need to store graphical output, the 512 megs is more than enough. Uh, given enough RAM, the CPU would very easily run a tablet that the average person would find adequate for checking Facebook and watching YouTube. 
And from what I found, this chip was also used in several Amazon Fire tablets and tablets from some other makers. Uh, Raspberry Pi is already a deal at $35, uh, except you can't find any. The Echo Dot, though, is still for sale for $25 or less. The thing is, voice control and speech interfaces have real utility. Uh, besides mundane stuff like, you know, setting a kitchen timer without touching anything, uh, lots of people have various physical limitations, and using voice control is a nice tool to have around. And uh, the real tragedy is that this utility became contingent on the ability to get people to buy more stuff from an online retailer. It's a solid piece of hardware that serves a legitimate need, but blows up in some insane way to the tune of billions of dollars for reasons that genuinely hurt my head to try and understand. It's uh, like, like if I designed a new kind of trackball, but then lost billions of dollars because it failed to make Greyhound racing more popular. Um, as someone who started out on the Commodore 64, it's amazing that engineers can get us like almost to Star Trek technology and then have management drive it right into the ground. Uh, the Echo Dot has enough local processing that it could be set up to do simple tasks like timers and control lights and a handful of text-to-speech information output jobs. Um, if you want an idea, I'll you know put a link down below. You can go grab CMU's Pocket Sphinx and run it on a Raspberry Pi and play around with it. Um, again, nice hardware, but uh, bad management. And finally, Microsoft is shipping an ARM-based development kit. Um, these sort of things are something developers have been asking for for a while, and specifically in the context of doing things like porting Linux and Linux applications to desktop form factors. Um, I've even been looking at one of these uh, Honeycomb LX2s, if I get $800 to just goof off with. Uh, honestly, there have been plenty of ARM-based systems out there to do this with, but coming from Microsoft, this kind of gives the whole thing a veneer of being serious business. Uh, what's interesting is I've seen a lot of offices switch everything over to Intel Nooks and uh, ultra-small one-liter kits from Dell and HP and Lenovo. I saw a couple offices take the opportunity to switch out all the desks and chairs since the computers now just bolt onto the back of the monitors and everything is now designed around monitor arms. Um, Apple and Chromebook are out there, but are kind of designed to run in walled gardens. You know, the Windows ecosystem is like, there's some pretty janky software written for it. So it'll be interesting to see if this is a serious go at ARM on the desktop, or if it's going to be a dev kit for another attempt at Windows on the smartphone. So there are some interesting times ahead. Uh, lots of programmers, engineers are going to be losing their jobs, and there are lots of ideas just being left on the table. Uh, supply chain issues aside, the hardware is really good right now, and the trade war talk is motivating China to up its game with more fabs and more unique chip designs. And uh, But until then, have fun. <laughs>